I knew that I had power that was beyond most people's imagination. I thought that nothing and no one could destroy me. How wrong I was. Chapter 4. Rise to Power. Elaine talks, I was now a member of the Brotherhood, had a new name and was what is known as a witch. About one month after I had signed the contract with Satan I had my first meeting with the local high priestess. The coven in my hometown was fairly large, about a thousand people. The high priestess contacted me and told me that she wanted to see me in her home. I was very surprised to be called by such a high authority. Very few girls are ever called to see the high priestess unless they are to be punished, or if she has something specific for them to do. Her home was elaborate and very beautiful and she ruled with an iron hand. She told me, you have been specially selected by Satan to be trained for his work and to become a high priestess if you can qualify. Within the Satanist cult this is a great honor. You must be highly ranked to be accepted for that type of training. The high priestess was an elderly lady. She had been a high priestess for many many years. She was very pretty even though she was old. Her personality was one of friendliness and yet there was something very cold about her. She knew that I was to replace her. A high priestess is always destroyed when she is replaced by another witch. She is commanded by Satan or one of his high demons to train another witch to take her place. She has no choice but to obey the command. I thought it strange that she should ask me to be trained for such a position as I was so young and a new member. What I didn't know at the time was that the demons that I already had were far stronger than hers, and that Satan had commanded her to teach me exactly what they were, how to use them, and how in the end, to destroy her. In my heart of hearts, I was not, and never would be, one for destruction. I enjoy living and I did not want to hurt this lady, but I knew that if I did not, she would kill me. I received intensive training in several areas for the next 20 months. I met with a high priestess mostly at her home or at other meeting places, where we met off in another room away from the other members of the cult. We met often, at least weekly. The contents of my training by the high priestess consisted mainly of incantations. I learned how to conjure up spirits to do my bidding. She taught me how to project and use that strange power that I had felt within me for so long. She taught me that those powers came from demons dwelling within me. She also taught me protocol and how to conduct cult meetings as a high priestess. The Sisters of Light also participated in my training. They were the principal ones responsible for training me to increase in power as rapidly as I did. Through their training I learned many secrets that most other high priestesses never know. They asked me to join their society but I refused. Secretly I always thought they were very strange. Arrangements were made for training in the martial arts as well. I already knew some karate and judo, but knew nothing about kung fu. I was given into the hands of a middle-aged Chinese man who was a master of all three. He was a well-known lawyer in my hometown. He was kind to me, but a very tough taskmaster. I learned much from him. He trained many cult people from the whole surrounding area. He thought that I had much potential and wanted me to participate in public competition. I never did and never wanted to. Learning the martial arts was a rigorous and very tormentive type of training. I asked special demons to come into me to give me the abilities I needed. The mind and the body must be trained to move as one. I could jump many feet in the air, land on my feet, make somersaults and come up and destroy someone with my feet and or hands. I became expert also in the use of knives, nunchucks, swords, guns, bow and arrows stars and many types of oriental weapons that are not well known in this country. Not only do high-ranking members of the cult receive such training, but a number of the lower-ranking members also receive it so that they can serve as guards, assassins, etc. I was taught much about Satan, almost all of it lies. I was taught about his power, about his love for me. How I had been rejected by God. How Satan loved me and wanted me as his own and about how I had been chosen among all women to be his high priestess. The Sisters of Light also told me much about the opportunity to become a regional bride of Satan. There are only 5 to 10 regional brides of Satan in the US at any one time. It is a position of great honor and power. The Sisters of Light told me they were sure I had the ability to attain this high position. They constantly talked about all the benefits I would gain if I reached it. 
I became determined to gain that position. The first demon that I actually saw, manifested to me in a physical form during that first ceremony when I signed the contract. The next demon I actually saw, was the first conjured up demon of my own. As I performed the appropriate incantation he appeared in a cloud of smoke which smelled strongly of sulfur. The whole episode was a very elaborate, very staged type of thing, but he was very real. Again, he was in a physical form. He was huge, about 8 feet tall. He had a body much like a man, yet different. He was all black. We have since come to know this class of demons as black warriors. He had fiery red eyes, huge hands, and his armor was really his skin. It was made up of thick, black, hard scales, something like a tortoise's shell. Each scale was about 6 inches or 15 centimeters square. I knew that this was a powerful demon and I had called him up just to see if I could do it. As he stood silently staring at me, I told him that I was the, chosen one. His response was, I know who you are, and I know that I am sent here to guard you and that nothing will ever harm you as long as I'm here, and as long as you serve the Almighty Satan, our Lord and our God. His name was Ruchan. He fought many battles both for me, and, when I was disobedient to Satan, against me. I saw and conversed with many demons after that. As my skill grew in being able to see the spirit world, I was able to see and talk with demons without them taking on a physical form. Indeed, I rarely asked them to appear physically except on occasions when I wanted to impress or frighten someone lower in the cult than myself. The next major demon I summoned was Man Chan. This was during one of my training sessions with a high priestess in her home. She told me that I was at a point in my training where I must learn and do a very special incantation. She did not tell me the purpose of the incantation and I did not ask. I knew this day was an important one because of the special preparations made. First, I drew on the floor with chalk a very large pentagram, then drew a circle around it. The purpose of the circle around the pentagram is to keep the demon summoned inside the circle unless you gave him permission to move out of it. The circle is supposed to protect the witch from the demon who comes. In reality, of course the demons do pretty much whatever they want. So I quickly learned to be very careful not to summon a demon that was stronger than the demons I had protecting me. Carefully, I placed a black candle in each corner of the pentagram, then a much larger black candle in the center. All six were lit. A table with a hot plate on it was set up close to the side of the pentagram. The contents of a kettle had been prepared earlier by the high priest. It was filled with desecrated holy water, that is, holy water from a Catholic church which the high priest then urinated into. He had also taken a dog and killed it and drained its blood into a special jar which he had given to me to take to the high priestess house. She then gave me some powders and herbs. The water in the kettle was brought to the boil on the hot plate just before I started the incantation. I asked no questions, but obeyed the high priestess instructions to the letter. I sat on the floor, staring into the black candle in the center of the pentagram, murmuring, Oh great Satan, the power and builder and creator of the universe, I beg thee, give me a demon to be the guide and light of my life, to give me all wisdom and knowledge. My beloved, O oh Master, grant to me my wish. At that point the high priestess spoke the name Man Chan to me. I then said, Man Chan come, you are welcome into my body, I bid thee arise from your hiding place. I took the powders and herbs and blood and cast them into the boiling kettle. The steam rose and immediately the room was filled with a very foul odor. I then dipped a desecrated golden goblet into the kettle, filling it. I set the goblet carefully down on the table and waited expectantly. Within about five minutes the liquid in the goblet had completely turned to powder. Then I took the goblet and threw the powder from it into the flame of the large candle in the center of the pentagram. Immediately there was a whoosh and a huge flame. The candle disappeared in blinding white light. As the light died down over the next few seconds, I could see the figure of what appeared to be an incredibly handsome young man. He had coal black hair and piercing black eyes that radiated intelligence. I hurried to my knees beside the pentagram. With a rag, I wiped away the chalk to form a clear pathway through the pentagram. The young man, who was actually the demon Man Chan in a physical form, stepped through to the outside of the pentagram on the pathway that I had made. 
he spoke to me in perfect English in a gentle manner, and with what seemed to be great love. He told me that I was to be inhabited by him and he promised that no harm would come to me. He told me that he would give me all wisdom and knowledge, he would be my teacher and guide. He called himself my Redeemer. I agreed, very much awed by his beautiful countenance. He then walked straight into me. But, in the instant before he entered, he changed from the human form to the demon he really was. Hideous. He was naked, his face had changed from beauty to hideous cruelty. The beautiful coal black locks of hair had become dull brown, and were coarse and sparse and stubby like pig bristles. His eyes were incredibly dark and evil, his mouth opened to show long sharp dirty yellow fangs. He had very long arms, his hands had stubby fingers tipped with long sharply pointed nails. He uttered a horrible hideous loud laugh of triumph, as he stepped directly into my body. I screamed out. First at the sight of him, then at the pain of his entrance searing, agonizing pain, such as I had never before experienced. I felt as if my body was on fire. I felt as if I was going to die and at that particular moment I wished with all my heart that I could do so. Richon stepped forward on hearing my cry, thinking that perhaps I was being attacked from without. But Man Chan spoke to him and told him that it was he and not to worry. As the pain died down, Man Chan told me that that was a small demonstration of what I would get if ever I disobeyed him, and also to let me know that he was there to stay, that nothing, and no one could ever make him leave. From that point on Man Chan was the main demon in my life. He communicated with me by putting thoughts directly into my mind. I communicated with him either by speaking out loud or by speaking with my spirit body. I did not fully realize it then, but Man Chan could not actually read my mind. He controlled me and kept all my doorways open to Satan and the other demons so that they could come and go as they choose, and also as I willed. My life became centered around him. I gave all of my time and effort trying to gain control of him, but he had more control of me than I did of him. Often he knocked me unconscious and completely controlled my body, using it as he pleased, frequently speaking through my mouth. He controlled when I ate and slept, how well I do my work how well I got along with people, my very life itself. I learned through him how to use demons, how to use them in spiritual warfare, how to use them to strengthen my own spirit body, how to use them in ceremonies, against other people, other witches, churches and even ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He gave me the ability to speak many languages and to walk and talk with great authority and power. But Man Chan was not the light that he promised or the thing of love and beauty as I had first seen him. He was something evil and rotten, and was eating away at my soul and body, causing me much suffering and much pain many many times because I would not uphold or participate in human sacrifices. Life was a continuous nightmare from that point on. I was living a double existence. That is, I was a member of a satanic cult and also simultaneously a member of a very large Christian church, where I taught and sang and participated in all sorts of activities. I was torn constantly, never free for a moment, completely trapped. I then began to have many battles with many witches. Battling is done in several ways. The most common is for the stronger witch to call the demons out of the weaker witch into herself, thus making her even stronger and often resulting in the destruction of the weaker because she no longer has the power to defend herself. Demons have no loyalties. They will always go to the stronger person. Satan's entire kingdom runs on the principle of competition, just the opposite of God's kingdom where everyone serves each other. Battling is rarely if ever done on a physical plane. Although witches do often use demons to destroy the physical body of a weaker witch. There was one witch in particular who attacked me. Her name is Sarah. I tried to explain to her that if she did not leave me alone I would have to destroy her. She did not believe me and finally we entered into full battle. What I saw was absolutely horrifying. I saw her grow weaker and weaker as I called demon after demon out of her and into myself. At first her demons fought back and I felt my own body being lifted up, thrown against walls, my throat being strangled without the sight of a physical hand. But what she saw was Man Chan and Richan and many other demons coming against her. They were tearing her body apart. She finally realized that I was truly the chosen one, 
that I was to be the high priestess and that she had lost the battle. She withdrew in time to live, and I thank God for that. She ended up in the hospital for quite some time as a result of the injuries she sustained in the battle. Years later she told me that it was during that time in the hospital that she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior, and she is now living fully and wholeheartedly for the Lord. Believe me, the change is beautiful. My first meeting with Satan came shortly before the ceremony in which I became the High Priestess. He came to me in the physical form of a man, and we sat down and talked. He told me that I was to be his High Priestess, that I was very special to him. He told me also that there had to be a sacrifice, more blood had to be shed for my purification so that I could become his high priestess. I hated that, but was relieved to find that at least it was to be an animal sacrifice. What I saw was a man, exceedingly handsome, very bright and sunny and shining. He seemed to have great love for me and didn't seem to be in any way a danger to me. Man Chan gave no indication of danger and neither did Rich on. I was very much awed by this meeting. I wanted him to come back, I felt a need deep down inside for him. For the first time in my life I felt truly really loved. How wrong I was. Satan hated my guts. He wanted only to use me for his own benefit and then planned to destroy me. I attended cult meetings very regularly during my two years of training. The meetings were held in barns, churches, houses, lodges, all different places. On the occasions when Satan was personally present, I was drawn more and more to him like a moth is attracted to a flame. He knew very well that he had me trapped. Just before becoming a high priestess, I saw a human sacrifice for the first time. We were in an old barn with at least a thousand people present. A small baby was used. She was selected because her mother gave the child to be sacrificed and thought it to be a great honor. The law never hears of these babies because most of them are illegitimate, they are born at home, the mother never sees anyone for prenatal care and no record of the baby's birth, or death, is ever made. The baby was trapped down on a stone altar which was in the shape of an upside down cross. I will never forget the awful sound of her screams, as the high priest drove a sharp knife into her chest and ripped out her living heart. Her blood was then drained off and drank first by the high priest and high priestos, then by other members who wished to do so. Many did, not only to receive new and stronger demons, but also because it is believed that such sacrifices provide increased fertility, and that the children conceived under such circumstances would be strong and intelligent and powerful in Satanism. I could not get away. I was trapped within the crowd. I was filled with horror. I was filled with emptiness and coldness and despair. I wondered why Satan wanted such a sacrifice. Wasn't Christ's blood enough? We were constantly being told about Christ's defeat on the cross and that he had been the ultimate sacrifice to Satan. But I was to learn that Satan's desire for blood and destruction is insatiable. My last and final battle with the high priestess was conducted with the direct approval of Satan. It took place at a big meeting in the church where I had first met the Sisters of Light. Satan was there and with a single nod gave me permission to take her on. She and I battled back and forth. She was very old and the battle was short, lasting only about 20 minutes. I do not kill her, I could not do that because I hold life very, very dearly. She quit as soon as she saw that she had become too weak to fight any longer. The following year she committed suicide. Then came the ceremony of my becoming the high priestess. A blood sacrifice was made. Then I was taken to the front of the room, or church. There were many, many people present because it was a very high ceremony and Satan himself was present. I was dressed in a robe of white with gold and red trimming. I had a crown put upon my head made of pure gold. I then signed another contract in my own blood declaring myself a high priestess of Satan. No one in the room made a sound as I signed that paper. Then the high priest, at an odd from Satan, rose to declare that I was now the new high priestess. He proclaimed that I was to be untouched by anyone else in the cult, by any demon, high priest, witch, or high priestess of any other coven, for I was, the chosen one. The crowd became ecstatic, shouting, chanting and dancing. Satan himself appeared to be overjoyed. Again, he was in a physical form of a very handsome man, a man of great brilliance and great authority. He was dressed all in shining white. 
the congregation bowed down before me and praised me as the great queen, as the queen of Satan Lord God Almighty, that I was and would forever be by his side and be able to convey to them his every wish and command. I felt as if, for the first time in my life, I had been truly accepted. I felt very proud, very much uplifted, and very, very powerful to the point that I thought that no one, including Satan himself, could destroy me. I was then put upon the altar of stone, my clothes were all taken off and Satan had sex with me to prove that I was his high priestess. The high priest and many others had sex with me also, the congregation went wild. Many of them were high on drugs and alcohol and the meeting turned into a sex orgy. Then Satan gave the most hideous laugh of triumph I have ever heard in my entire life. My body became cold and rigid. I remember feeling such guilt, such pain, such hurt. The cold and emptiness that I felt that night I will never forget. Bible passage, and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. Genesis 6, 1, 2 and 4